Hello, and welcome to Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. As we're recording this, voting is taking place in New Hampshire for their primaries. We're going to cover that in a future episode, provided we survive the rural rioting that will take place no matter the result. <laughs> Donald Trump was in court this past week at his civil trial for defamatory remarks he made against his sexual assault victim, the writer E. Jean Carroll. He released a courtroom sketch someone made where he was seated next to Jesus. Now, Jesus did mm -hmm. used to hang with derelicts and thieves, so that image tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of all the times not to portray a crucifixion scene. Oh, God. <laughs> when leaving his court appearance in New York City, Trump was spotted with red spots on his hands. There was some speculation that it was syphilis, but I think it's something far more simple. Satan trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> In an interview, Ben Carson defended Trump, saying, quote, he's not a highly vindictive individual, which is easy to say if, like Carson, <laughs> you've just woken up from a nap that started in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> The political party No Labels achieved ballot access here in my home state of Maryland. Given that the state's leader of the movement is Larry Hogan, the party should be called No Personalities. <laughs> <laughs> People like Larry Hogan and Joe Manchin are basically fence sitters. They won't take a stand on something one way or the other. They have the personality of bloody diarrhea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Admittedly, that's not a fair comparison, as fecal matter can be used to make fertilizer. <laughs> House Democrats brought up a resolution to censure Congresswoman Elise Stefanik for referring to the January 6th defendants as hostages. Her ilk is so into defending them and calling them hostages that I'm watching for their blinking patterns to see if they're in fact the hostages here and if they need help. <laughs> A winter storm hit the East Coast this week. The Washington, D.C. area hasn't been hit with this much white stuff that stopped traffic since January 6th. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers was let go by ESPN before show host Pat McAfee had him back on. It seems ironic that Pat McAfee gave Aaron Rodgers another shot when Aaron Rodgers himself <laughs> wouldn't get a shot of his own. <laughs> mm -mm. David Smith, the right-wing zealot, has bought the Baltimore Sun, my hometown newspaper. I look forward to the city's residents putting the paper to good use by lighting it on fire and using them as torches to chase Smith out of town. <laughs> <laughs> the Sun reported that Smith was caught performing a sex act on a street corner in Baltimore City known to be frequented by prostitutes. That's not right. I could have suggested several places for that activity that would not have been filled with police roadblocks. <laughs> if he was really a man of the people, he would have just used a park and ride or the shoulder of the Jones Falls <laughs> Expressway like the rest of us. <laughs> An 84-year-old McDonald's worker in Gibsonia, Pennsylvania, retired after 45 years of working at the Golden Arches location there. She started working there before the invention of the McNuggets. And I'm convinced that the last McNuggets I ate were the prototype that she initially oversaw before the products roll out. <laughs> <laughs> Upon her retirement, the marquee outside the restaurant where she worked read, time for fun. So now she will go out and cram as much of that into her remaining six months. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and now on with the show. Joining me tonight are Jeff Heisen, Gina Brown, Polite Kitty, and Joshua Postel. Hey, Tom. What's up? What's up, Tom? Uh, not too much. Not too much. What's everyone else been up to this week? I'm trying to figure out where Taylor Swift's going to stay in Baltimore when she, if she comes to the uh, the Chiefs Ravens game on Sunday. I'm picking the Pooks Hill Marriott. What do you think? <laughs> oh. I think personally, I think a lot of Swifties are going to be disappointed because they'll they'll want to get into the stadium to see her. And then th that's going to be the biggest disappointment since Ticketmaster, which is getting cussed out uh, in a Baltimore accent by season ticket holders. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> you don't think that the that that the referees in the game are going to be uh, afraid of facing social media backlash from Taylor Swift fans if a call goes the Ravens' way? I I think that they might be more afraid of the people who live in Baltimore, and they should be. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could argue that. <laughs> and I would join them, <laughs> even though I'm a pacifist. <laughs> so. The end of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' bid for the White House had the calamity of the sinking of the Titanic and the explosion of the Hindenburg combined, except in this instance, people were gleefully cheering the mass casualty event. <laughs> With the suspension of his campaign and endorsement of former President Trump, the political future of DeSantis crashed so much that in any other context, such a news headline would have read, two white Florida men team up to take a job from a brown-skinned woman. <laughs> in his video message endorsing Trump, DeSantis attributed a quote to Winston Churchill that was actually used in a 1938 ad for Budweiser. <laughs> it, it makes sense as excessive consumption of both alcohol and Ron DeSantis can lead to the killing of brain cells. <laughs> in his campaign and throughout his political career, DeSantis often eschewed public appearances and stuck to posting many of his announcements on social media. Damn, finally a candidate just like me and the only way he knows how to keep warm during the winter is by burning books. <laughs> <laughs> A common practice when you consider there is not much demand for space heaters in Florida. <laughs> I personally am waiting for things to get so bad with these candidates that their political futures will be filled with such disappointment. And the most listened to podcast they are able to do is this one. <laughs> <laughs> So this is uh, kind of breaking news in terms of this podcast, in terms of how I usually prepare. Are we are we excited to see Ron DeSantis go or did we want him to just stay in and get kicked around a little more? He'll always have his high heels. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get kicked around now by Mickey Mouse and... He'll lash out at his, at, at his constituents because he's basically just this angry, twisted thing in heels with zero emotions. And it'll be like a cross between Joan Crawford and Hal from 2001. Let's, <laughs> let, let's see what underserved part of the Florida community I can hurt now. That's That may be it. Because that, that'll make him feel like more, more of a man. Yeah, and I think he's just going to go into a little corner and prepare for um, 2028. Like, I don't think it's over. I think he's just going gone away, and he didn't want the humiliation of New Hampshire, so he got out right before he was going to get that. Now any numbers that he amasses there for what write-ins or what if they can even do that, he would just be like, well, I, I pulled out. Like, I, look how good I did even when I pulled out, you know. But, yeah, I think he's going in a corner, and we'll see him again. Yeah, yeah I, I agree, Gina. I think he's going to go in a corner. Uh stare into a mirror telling him how much of a winner he is yeah <laughs> and ba i think he's now see i think he's gonna do what most politicians do which is write and for the people out there and i'm putting that in quotation marks write a book <laughs> and uh, and then we'll see him back in 2028 yeah, the is he gonna write a book or is he just gonna tell himself he's great like he's gonna be singing aloe black to himself in the mirror over and over again yeah, that song that he ripped off of elton john He's, he's going to write a book and then ban it. Right. I think, well, and I think that the the, the self-help books in Florida are going to go up for a while. Sales of self-help books for a while. They're going to go up while he buys them to build himself up. Um, and then he'll ban them. Yes. I think, but, but Tom asked if, if we're happy. And the problem is that, uh, as you put it, Gina, with him pulling out, uh, and, and if Trump wins, tr pulling out may be the only legal form of contraceptive in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while to get there, but it was. Worth it. I, I, I'm, I'm just shocked that he, I'm just shocked that he uh, 
terminated it anyway because aren't you <laughs> not allowed to terminate a pregnancy? Oh, you think he should have carried it to fruition? <laughs> exactly. Just, <laughs> just, just let himself get kicked even more, and he could be humiliated just that much more. Mainly because I'm seriously convinced that between the heels and the lack of emotion, and did you see how that comedian in Iowa rip, ripped into him with the? participation trophy and he had no clue what to do with it no. i think he's just a bottom he's just the <laughs> ultimate turbo bottom at this point but that's <laughs> the entire you gotta understand that's the entire gop oh, God. he's a despicable human being and he deserves the the ass kicking that he got uh the problem i don't think he is- got his ass kicked enough yeah <laughs> I think it's yeah. interesting that like all these candidates who decided to go up against Trump, because it was a large field that decided to run against him for this nomination. And they all pulled out early enough that it's basically, ironically enough, it's basically a metaphor for them taking the morning after pill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're all riding his jock now, though. <laughs> they're all... <laughs> They all are like, you know, Tim's got, and all, they're all just riding it. Wait, they're pick me's. <laughs> yeah. It's they're, like they're, the phone call afterwards. I still love you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, been I'll there, still been over, there. <laughs> I'll still come over and have dinner with a guy who's supposedly known for soiling himself and not even realizing it. <laughs> but also the, the fact that he endorsed the former guy, after all the things the the former guy continuously said about him, he he couldn't uh, he did it right away. He he yeah. ju- he couldn't just say I I'm suspending my campaign. Yeah, and notice yeah. he suspended it. He didn't uh, terminate it because in case Trump's in prison, he could, he still has the active campaign. It's only suspended, but that's. The way he phrased it, but he just—he comes across as so—he uh, he comes across such a loser, given all the things that Trump said about him. And they said, "Well, now I want you to, ha- despite all the things you said about me, I want you to have the biggest job in the world." Yeah, it's it's very um, it's like a sort of an abusive sort of relationship that uh, the sec the everybody that was competing against him seemed to have. They're like, but we still love you. Oh, you can come back home, honey. Even after they, he's done them all dirty, but they're still, no, it's okay. He, he apologized in this case, he never did, but you know, but they still keep the door open for him. It's not uncommon for presidential candidates to say one thing about their opponents and another when it comes time to end their campaigns. And Ron DeSantis is no exception, as we can see in this before and after video compilation. You can be the most worthless Republican in America, but if you kiss the ring, he'll say you're wonderful. You can be the strongest, most dynamic, uh, successful Republican and conservative in America, but if you don't kiss that ring, then he'll try to trash you. You know what? You deserve a nominee that's going to put you first, not himself first. The majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackaged form of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. And off camera, someone's like, say these words or Snowflake the Dolphin gets it. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about kissing the ring, though. That's he said he doesn't want Republicans to kiss the ring. And I'm not a Republican that's going to kiss the ring. And then that's what that's what he did. Yeah. He didn't just kiss the ring. He was sucking the dick. <laughs> yeah. Very graphic. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, I don't, I, I never understand why we don't do, or maybe we will and do side-by-sides in ads 
and show this. I mean, you have to run it for the independents because Dems, we don't, we're not going to be pulled one way or the other, right? But we're in states where it matters. It if you're concerned about flip flopping and things like that, you know. But I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter if he's out. I don't know. Well, that could be played in uh, if if and when he runs again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or if he gets on, if as he gets a position that's noteworthy in this, you know, alongside the former guy. Well, congratulate him, though, on having a Twitter announcement, which didn't uh, have any technical difficulties the way his annou- his his entrance video did. At least he, he's mastered that. Right. <laughs> With the full endorsement of DeSantis, it's official. His truth social moniker is no more. We know this because Donald Trump said so and made the case in front of a group of his supporters, as this Twitter X video shows us. Okay. You just said, will I be using the name Ron DeSanctimonious? I said, that name is officially retired. (laughs) That name is officially retired until... 2027, maybe 2025, <laughs> if Biden wins again. Does, does, he, uh, does he raise the names, the retired names to the rafters like a retired number? <laughs> <laughs> Should he try to sell it on eBay to the highest bidder? <laughs> He'll sell it as some kind of weird NFT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's- laughs> Do you think he has like... Um, Little Marco and Lion Ted uh, <laughs> over uh, over some uh, sports field at Mar-a-Lago that he doesn't use because he's unathletic as fuck. <laughs> I just like to think of him as like Krampus. He's got like the list of things, you know, of all the names and he just checks them off. <laughs> he, he's like Krampus. But dumber, like Krampus was actually fully scary. Trump is scary, but not like that. He's scary <laughs> in, in, in a way where you're just like, you're going, yeah, humanity has no hope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Krampus you know, had like, at least some joviality in him, whereas Trump, yeah. was, uh, uh, no, uh uh-uh. uh. The, the old Trump is just this really bad edgelord comic that just can't stop punching down <laughs> in other words in other words he's like some comics i know in certain states who shall remain nameless well he only has one act is that what you're saying josh like if he said if they said to him if he was if there was excuse me if it was a comic who only wore blue and then they said well we need you to do five minutes hey <laughs> couldn't do five minutes clean because he only can work blue. Is that what you're saying, Josh? No, I'm saying he's a crummy crowd work comic. And <laughs> <laughs> he can't even do blue comedy. It's that bad. It, it, it's, it's, it's like a Matt Rife wannabe. But, but he's committed so. to the crowd work. That's the kicker. Is that yes. he's not super good at the crowd work, but he's so committed to it. <laughs> Ron DeSantis has done his best to avoid interviews on mainstream news outlets, but unfortunately, such outlets have been unable to return the favor by avoiding coverage of his campaign. So it was refreshing to see this. A fitting send-off of the Florida governor by MSNBC's Joy Reid. Let me play, this is probably the last time we're going to be able to play this montage, so let's play a few lowlights of cringy Ron. (laughs) <laughs> i'm not a candidate so we'll see if uh, if and when that changes oh what is that an icy yeah that's probably a lot of sugar huh <laughs> well we're uh, i'm here i don't know if you have the one okay all right, all right. It's good. It's good. all right we'll say hi to everybody the politics has gotten crazy oh, yeah, that's it. yeah okay don't back down like he's basically like if if someone created an AI version of a politician, but the person who put the parameters in was on PCP, and then that's what you, <laughs> that's what, that's what they created. I would have, I, I think a piece, somebody on PCP would have 
a little more spunk, don't you think? <laughs> Someone on PCP would actually be funny. Right. He's not even that. <laughs> but in the it, last it, clip, it, it, there was a guy in, in the last clip who said, don't back down. Well, his campaign uh, organization was never backed down. Uh, he he backed down in January. It didn't take yeah. it. Never never lasted until January. Yeah. Right after, if I don't know if you noticed that at the end, but and and I didn't see this until someone pointed it out. But he rubbed his face like this, and then went ahead and rubbed it on the guy's shoulder or patted his shoulder. Yep. Uh, basically, basically, he rubbed his own. Uh like sweat and snot on somebody it was like oh <laughs> but yeah and his um to be fair in florida was... that's how they say hello <laughs> <laughs> that's true actually but here's the thing he didn't just back down he bent over <laughs> there we go let me ask the group Sorry. But he didn't say it but he didn't say it that's the <laughs> law in florida let me ask the no group. that's right you no. can't say that there because <laughs> it would trigger Ron and give him a flashback. It would also probably get him stimulated. <laughs> like a lot of the people, especially who support Ron DeSantis, they don't like Biden because of his age. They call him doddering and all that. But meanwhile, DeSantis didn't look like he was faring any better in that video. And and he's forty five. He's forty five years old. And he's already acting like That's that. That's all like he is. Like, like he's, yeah, like, he's, he's, yeah, he's 45. Yeah. yeah I mean, he, he's th- there were just days he, where he just looked like he just autom- automaton is being mild. He just looked like he just looked like he was having a break. It was, it was like, it was like the computer freezing constantly. Yeah. My late grandmother, when she had dementia and other issues, it was my father's mother at the end of her life. Even she didn't have breakdowns like that. Well, Joshua, running for office and everybody hating you does take a toll. <laughs> <laughs> speak, Maybe, hey, listen, but... speak for yourself. I, uh, people <laughs> hating me doesn't take a toll on me. Nobody hates me. T- <laughs> Nobody hates, you know, I, I, I love being hated. Are you kidding? It's great. <laughs> Keeps me going. But he really <laughs> looked, but he really looked, he looked like there was nothing there. You looked into his eyes and it would be like, there's nothing behind it. Just white hot anger and high heels. <laughs> I'm sorry, the high heels thing. It's just so much fun. The hot anger and high heeled boys. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we I'll never right have any musical is. numbers on this show. This, or this, at this, least that's why that's why they're all cut from the final edit. There's something yeah. called retail politics, and he never uh, c- could be able to grasp it. He doesn't know how to deal with people. We we saw and heard that in the clips early on. There was something we a, a, a clip that uh, Tom showed uh, on this on this program of a guy who came up to him and he said, hi, I came here. My name is Bill. And as DeSantis looked at him and he didn't know how to process this, he didn't understand it. So he said, okay. And he walked away. And he walked. Yeah. It's it's exactly right. He can't handle retail anything. He can't, he he, he can't do anything that isn't pre-programmed. Yeah, but that I, makes me feel like he, he might. I mean, I don't know. Polite is he on the spectrum? <laughs> ding, ding, ding! I watched those videos and I thought that's what I look like at a party. Hi, <laughs> is that an icy? I didn't know we wear shoes. Yeah, I mean, and that's fine. But like, I think you do. There are some social graces and things that yes. Jeff, I agree. Things you must learn, even if you normally are a bit more robotic, you have to at least fake the funk, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it. Yep. A friend of mine down in Florida told, who works with children and 
adults on the spectrum has been in the room with him and has told me he's absolutely on the spectrum. Yeah. It's just too obvious. It's just too obvious. And to protect and to protect uh, Tom, this is just our unofficial uh, opinion. We're not doctors. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> but polite, polite knows. I mean, polite works with people. Like you know, I mean, she actually, of all of us, is more inclined to <laughs> say something. Yeah, I therapist. would say so. Yeah. I mean, I work with them, and I'm autistic. So unfortunately, yeah. I have to live with the fact that my opinion is of he may be on the spectrum. Great, I'm related to that. <laughs> no, but that's okay. Because- <laughs> It was, so even that's, if it was like neurotypical, what the, if we, we don't want them. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, nobody wants them. Right? So that's our resident expert opinion right there. Our, our <laughs> resident our resident spectrum expert. Polite kitty, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, that's our show. I want to thank Jeff Heisen, Gina Brown, Polite Kitty, and Joshua Postel. Hey, thank you, Tom. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But before we go, my final thought. i like to take all of you on a journey. We'll be going forward to the year 2055. You're walking along the beach and admiring the southern coastline, thinking how strange it is that you're doing this as you're visiting Nashville. On your mm-hmm. walk, you come across a bridge and are startled by the rustling of foliage. You examine the source of the rustling, and a small gnome pops out. The gnome is dressed in tattered clothes and smells of tequila and Axe body spray. You ask his (laughs) name, you ask his name, and he becomes indignant. You mean you don't know? You don't recognize me? The gnome asks. You reply that you don't, at which point the gnome says, I'm Ron DeSantis! (laughs) In a shrill (laughs) scream. Ah, you should have guessed. Even though the clothes are rags, The pristine white boots are recognizable, although now they come up to his hips, which explains why the gnome walks like the 1977 version of Fat Elvis without drugs. (laughs) (laughs) The Ron DeSantis gnome tells you that after Florida succumbed to the rising sea level caused by a storm surge, which will be known in future history books with the status of the new classification of Category 10 Super Hurricane Dwayne, Ron DeSantis had no choice but to find the nearest bridge under which he could seek shelter and start a new life. Throughout the years since the inundation of Florida, the DeSantis gnome has sought to steal provisions from boats and seaplanes trying to flee to a drier climate, which doesn't exist, as everything not underwater in this country is now on fire. Uh Slowly saving his resources, the Ron DeSantis gnome is ready to stage his big comeback. He is preparing to rule in an underwater fiefdom. His book bans are already in full force, as he doesn't even have to stage a book burning. The offending texts in question will be easily gobbled up, thanks to the superplankton that exists as a result of the trifecta disaster, nuclear spill slash toxic waste spill slash earthquake, that occurred under the presidency of Bubba Bobert, Lauren's grandson, in 2049. (laughs) Everything is in place now, and the gnome version of Ron DeSantis has no more time to talk. So he swims off, as he has a lot to do, what with trying to merge the underwater cities of Tampa, Mobile, Alabama, and Biloxi, Mississippi, so he can <laughs> anoint himself the region's aquatic super governor, resulting in <laughs> his 10th consecutive run for the White House. All he has to do is reincarnate Diamond of Diamond and Silk, and he will have his winning presidential ticket. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> This episode was written and hosted by Tom Myers with panelists Jeff Heisen, Gina Brown, Polite Kitty, and Joshua Postel. Theme music composed and arranged by Jeroen Vandenjurek. Executive producers Tom Myers, Matt Connerton for IPM Nation, and Eddie Carson for Odyssey Radio. Please leave a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast's Patreon for early access to episodes, ad-free episodes, extended episodes, bonus clips, and more. Thank you for listening, and please visit tommyers.us.